Our next guest, Ian Eagle, on the Rich Eisen Show. Always try to get Ian in a good mood when the weather's nasty, and a Q's victory over Louisville can probably do that. Uh, NC and Duke as well. Ian, did you watch either game last night, or were you working? I, I did. I did. I was very dedicated, very dedicated sports fan last night. Let me just play off of uh, your last guest, Steve Heitner, uh, the, the amazing Steve Heitner, because I recall a time, late 90s, probably 97 in that range, I was driving with the ubiquitous Jim Spinarkle to a net Nick game at Madison Square Garden. We were at a light at Herald Square, middle of the winter, and who do I see crossing the street but Steve Heitner? And I tell Jimmy, hey, that's Banya right there, Banya. He goes, no. I go, that's Banya. He's right there. Jimmy proceeds to roll down the window and just yell out to the guy, hey, Banya. <laughs> You go, Jerry! <laughs> and Steve turns around, frightened. He's frightened at this point. <laughs> right? Yeah, there's, there's a large guy named Spinarkel just yelling at you in the middle of the street. And he waves and, and continues with his day. And I turned to Jimmy. I said, that's, that's really not something you should have done. Well, because I'm sure he never hears that, number one. No! And, and secondly, ubiquitous Spinarkel is a great band name. <laughs> <laughs> if that's yeah. not taken yet. Yeah, they died down uh, late late 80s, but uh, they had a good run. The yeah, uh, castles were you, built on pillars of salt and pillars of sand, I believe. <laughs> uh, I'm well. I, I, it's nice to talk to you, and I, I want to talk some NBA, get into some wacky travel stories, too, because I know we both had some lately. Uh, sad news, though, from the NBA. We, I guess we got to start with this. Uh, Jerome Kersey becomes yeah. the latest Portland trailblazer from the, from the late 90s to pass away. Uh, he was 52. He dies on the day that Maurice Lucas would have been 53. Mm. Uh, so many guys from, from that era, from the Blazers, are, are gone way too soon. Yeah, it's eerie, very eerie for a team that, uh, if, if you were of a certain age, had a lot of respect for what the Trail Blazers did with Drexler and Kersey and Terry Porter and Kevin Duckworth and the like, Buck Williams. Uh, Jerome, to me, was uh, always a glue guy. Uh, just did his job, uh, didn't do it necessarily in the flashiest of ways, but he would have these spurts where he could just take over. Uh, he was a bull. He, he was a guy that fit in perfectly, was loved in that community, later worked for the team, and that's the job that he held right up until uh, a few days ago. So, yeah, terrible Terrible news and uh, very strange that uh, the fate of, of that team. We've we've seen some untimely deaths and uh, sad story. Very sad. There's a guy who was in the, the dunk contest four times in the Jordan era, and I use that as kind of a weird segue to talk about uh, Zach Levine and that show that he put on. First of all, and this is a true story, Zach Levine was the point guard on my middle school basketball team. Way different Zach Levine. Uh, Herbert, <laughs> Herbert Cohen was the other backcourt mate of, yeah. that, of that Zach Levine. This is a very different Zach Levine, but uh, this is a young kid who opened everybody's eyes. Yeah, uh, the Zach Levine that you mentioned, middle school team, fundamentally sound. Oh, very, yeah, but the socks were pulled sound. way up, and it never, never really took. Yeah, across the board. This Zach Levine from Minnesota, look. Anyone that follows the draft knew how gifted this kid was. The problem was the playing time at UCLA wasn't really there, didn't seem to fit in all that well. He commits to the NBA draft. Some people question whether or not that was the right move. You look at him athletically, you say, wow, the upside is there. Now it's a question of translating all of that ability into becoming a winning player. I think Minnesota has a plan in mind here with Flip Saunders. He should be a big part of it. But, boy, uh, he was the hit of All-Star Weekend because those that were not familiar with his aerial skills realized quickly uh, he's, he's gifted. He's a special kid. Well, speaking of UCLA guys, sources are saying now that the Blazers are going to get Aaron Aflalo. Uh, yep. Your Nets are working on a Lopez to Oki City deal. What else are you hearing as the, the trade deadline is upon us now? Well, the other interesting one with the Nets is Kevin Garnett and whether or not he would accept the deal to Minnesota in the final year of his contract, 20th year in the NBA, getting back to his roots, maybe helping some of those young guys like Zach Levine, and it's all up to him at this point. The Nets are interested in Thaddeus Young. Minnesota is interested in dumping Thaddeus Young. So it fits for both teams, but Kevin Garnett has a no-trade clause, and the question becomes whether or not he wants to pick up middle of the year and 
and uh, change the whole course of this season and maybe wrap up his career in Minnesota. Who knows? Maybe he can get an extra year out of the deal and convince the Timberwolves that he should hang around for a little while to help these young guys and play a 21st year in the NBA. Uh, Other guys that we're hearing, uh, Andre Miller looks like uh, he will be dealt Ramon Sessions has popped up in conversation. There have been some other rumors about the Nets and Jared Jack possibly being a part of the Washington mix. They clearly want to get better on their second unit. They feel like they can make a run in the Eastern Conference. So I think there's a lot of activity right now around the NBA as things now count down to about two hours and change before the deadline hits. Ian, we've only got a minute here on the Rich Eisen program. Josh Lewin filling in for Rich today. Uh, Neighboring you, those New York Knickerbockers always in the news, whether you've got an owner firing off uh, wacky emails or uh, Stoudemire taking a walk over to Dallas, Carmelo Anthony now shut down. There's chaos there a little bit. Uh, So I kind of throw it to you with Anthony especially. The Knicks haven't won this year without him. They're 0-13. Now they go the rest of the way without him. So what's happening there? First and foremost, they're in the mix for this Goran Dragic deal. The Suns recognize that Dragic wants out. They're not going to be able to re-sign him. The Knicks believe he's a guard that they can help build around and pair with Carmelo Anthony. So if that happens, I think the Knicks will walk away from the trade deadline feeling good about what they've got moving forward. In the short term, a lot of drama. We know that the Carmelo decision to uh, be a part of the All-Star game, uh, a big reason why. Now he shuts it down, and, and the Knicks hope that Phil Jackson can create a little magic moving forward. It hasn't happened yet. We're going to have to table our wacky travel stories for next time you and I are able to chat, but I, I've got a doozy for you. I'll tell you off the air. Are you getting everywhere you need to be? You're okay? You're safe? Uh, yeah, thank you. Thanks for your concern, Josh. Yes, I have. I've got a couple as well, so we can compare notes, and that, that's quite a tease uh, yes, for, well, for the listeners and viewers for the next time. I'll buy you a lunch. I hear good things about Mendy's. Here, the swordfish is fantastic. Well, uh, and the soup. That's yeah. a meal. <laughs> that counts as a meal. If you crumble crackers. Thanks, buddy. Travel well. Stay warm. Stay well, Josh. All right. That's the great eye and eagle. The Rich Eisen Show. Weekdays at noon Eastern. On audience.